but all I wanted was to go fishing with my friends. I hadn't seen them in so long, and COVID practically makes it impossible for us to travel to each other. But in a stroke of luck and coincidence, we all managed to get a week off and met up at my place in Florida. We were all excited, you know, so happy to be able to catch up. I mean, shit, my buddy was getting married. Needless to say, this time was important for all of us. I just wish we hadn't gone near those stairs. We met each other days ago in Jacksonville. I live on the beach. We have a boat docked a few minutes away from my house. It's a fairly nice vessel, nothing special, but she gets the job done. We went to a few local restaurants the first day, did a lot of drinking, then the next morning packed her up with beer, food, and fishing supplies, and we set off. It was a beautiful day. Sun shining in the middle of a clear blue sky, the wind gently billowing in our hair as we sat and drank and fished. <laughs> we caught up on each other's lives. My buddy's marriage proposal. My other buddy getting his doctorate. <laughs> there were four of us in total, and everything was going great. Until suddenly, the boat hit something none of us could see. We jerked upright, and my friend Doms peered over the side of the boat to see what we hit. He turned back to us, speechless, motioning frantically to see what we had found. Me and my other two friends, David and Ben, quickly joined him, and in front of us was a staircase. A staircase leading into the darkness of a water. Water was parted, almost as if it was protected by a tunnel made of glass. Water was splashing around, and no water actually got inside. Stairs were completely dry, and it looked as though they were made of stone. Strange glyphs and inscriptions carved in each one. None of us recognized any of the symbols. At first, we couldn't take our eyes off of it. Ben was the first to find his voice. He said that we should leave, but something didn't feel right about it. Maybe it's one of those uh, installations, like an optical illusion, he said quickly. Maybe there's a hidden camera somewhere. We looked around. We didn't see anything for miles. Miles of ocean. In hindsight, I couldn't even recall us going out that far away from the shore. No way, Dave replied. There's nothing out here, just us. Maybe we should go, Dom said, picking up a beer. I want to see something. Before any of us could protest, he lobbed the beer down the staircase. It tumbled down, echoing the whole way. Kept going until we couldn't hear it anymore. We tried a flashlight, but the darkness was just too absolute. We couldn't see anything other than more stairs descending into the depths. This is insane, I said. I just can't wrap my fucking head around it. It looks like they go on forever. We all nodded, still unable to take our eyes off them. When we could finally pull ourselves away, the sun was setting. Dave checked his phone and it was dead. In fact, all our electronic devices, our phones, our speakers were all out of battery. I checked the analog clock I had on board and it read 6.48 p.m. When I told them the time, they couldn't believe it. We came out here at around 9 in the morning, right? Ben asked. I'm, I'm fucking nervous, man. We we shouldn't be here. I mean, how has that much time passed? Yeah, I don't feel good either. Like, my stomach's full. We haven't eaten. Hell, I only had like two beers, some toast before we came out. My stomach's going wild. Dave let out a groan. We should just head back. We all nodded. But I grabbed the coordinates from my GPS just in case. Thankfully, the boat was working fine, and I managed to pull us away from the staircase, but not before bumping into something else as we pulled away. We reasoned it was probably just another part of the staircase structure. I mean, hell, we could have stumbled upon some sort of massive underwater building or something. We brushed it off and set the GPS back to the dock, and made our way silently back to shore. Oh, man, my, my stomach's fucking killing me, Dave groaned. I don't know what's going on. Maybe add some... Bad toast, Ben joked. You should... Before he could finish his sentence, Dave was throwing up into the ocean. It went on like this for a while, up until we got to the shore, and then some. When we docked, Ben went over to pick up our food cooler, and noticed there was a putrid smell coming from it. We opened it up, and all the sandwiches we brought were covered in a thin layer of blue and black mold. The smell of it was almost too much to handle. Ugh, man! I let out an exasperated sigh. I was excited to eat that. What the hell happened? The whole thing's weird, 
Ben said. Maybe the food was a bit bad when you packed it? No way, I replied. I'd never... Hey, guys. Gabe's voice weakly called from where he was throwing up in a trash can on the dock. I think something's wrong. We all looked at each other and quickly walked over to him. Black liquid mixed with bile was all over his mouth and shirt. He was swaying back and forth like he was drunk. His eyes were puffy and a bit bloodshot like he'd been crying. Oh shit! Dom handed him a bottle of water and he began washing the fluid from his face. What happened? I don't know, Dave said. I feel a bit better now. I think I think I just need to sleep. Can, can we go home, please? Yeah. Yeah, man, let's, let's pack a car and get out of here. Shit, I'm, I'm sorry. I got some medicine back at my place. That'll be, that'll probably be helpful. Yeah. Dave simply replied. I think I just need some sleep. You sure we shouldn't take you to the hospital? Ben asked. No, I'm fine. Dave's voice was a bit strange, like he was far away. I just need sleep. The car ride home was uneventful, and Dave ended up passing out before we even got back to my house. We helped him into the shower, and he went to bed shortly afterward without saying anything. We just chalked it up to him getting seasick, and put on a movie while Dom's and I smoked. Eventually, our appetites returned and we ordered some pizza, briefly discussing the strange things that happened. It would be our luck, right? Ben said, biting into a slice of pizza. That was weird shit. What happened right when we finally get some time off to relax? Yeah. Dave seems okay, though. Thank God, I said. Grabbing another slice. We'll do something a bit more low-key tomorrow. There's a bunch of dope museums around here. Art district's packed on Saturdays. He ended up chatting for a little bit more before we started to pass out. And moved to our respective places in the house. I don't usually remember my dreams. But, but this time, I couldn't stop thinking about the staircase. For some reason. In my dream, I was swimming towards it. But the water was thick, like ink. And as I pulled myself up to the mouth of the stairs, I felt the warmth, gently calling me forward. Before I went any further, I was shaken awake by Ben at around five in the morning. Yeah, what? What? How do I wipe sleep from my eyes? Dude, what's going on? It's so... It's so early. Dave's gone, Ben said quietly. I shot up in my bed. What, what the fuck do you mean, Dave's gone? I mean, I went to drop off a glass of water by his bed, you know, since he, he looked like shit and all. Ben motioned for me to get up. I I'll show you. I followed him to my guest room. Ben stood awkwardly in front of it, motioning for me to open the partially cracked door. The first thing I noticed was the smell. The sheets on the bed were caked with yellow and black bile, and there were bits of blood dotted around the pillow, resting on the bedside table as a singular... tooth. What the fuck? I said as I left the room, unable to take the smell any longer. What, 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 the, what the fuck? Where, where's Dom? Asleep on the couch. Fuck. Uh, maybe he went to the hospital. Should we call them? I did, Ben said nervously. Nobody with his name checked in. Nobody matched his description I gave. Fuck. I rubbed my temples. Okay, okay, fuck. Fuck, did you, did you call his phone? He's dead. Jesus Christ. I can't catch a break. I'll go back to my room. I left my wallet and phone in the car by accident last night. Let me get that. We'll, we'll think of what to do next. Can you wake up, Doms? Tell them what happened. Yeah. I went back to my room to grab my keys I had put on my bedside table, but I couldn't find them anywhere. I tore my room apart before resigning to defeat, plucking my spare form from the underside of my mattress, but when I got outside to get my things, the car wasn't there anymore. I stood for a few moments completely speechless before retreating back inside. Now we're silently around the kitchen table, the three of us, speechless as to what just happened. Dave would never do something like this, especially without telling anyone. Needless to say, we aren't sure what to do next. The only thing we are sure of is that we all dreamt of those stairs last night. We rented a car after having coffee. I mean, it may seem stupid, but we didn't want to report my car stolen quite yet. If he was as sick as he was last night, a cop might hurt him. 
We just wanted this to end quietly. Stupidly, I think we... We still felt like this weekend could still be salvaged. We could bring Dave to get treated at the hospital. The good news was the three of us were showing no symptoms of whatever Dave had. We threw away all the sheets in my guest room. We put the tooth in the plastic bag in my refrigerator because I guess you never know if they could put it back. Dom's had me place it in a little cup of milk because he heard that it could preserve it longer, but the roots of the tooth were black. And they were curved inward, almost like a like a fish hook, you know? It didn't look like it would go back in. We left without eating, and we drove by my boat. And it was still there, but there was no sign of my car. When we drove closer and got out to inspect it, the boat's keys were in the ignition, and there were three more teeth in the captain's chair. There were dents in the body of the boat, a few tears in the upholstery. This is really fucking bad, Ben said. We should call the police. He's pulling out his fucking teeth. Yeah, but... Dom inspected the jagged tooth. It doesn't look like a human's tooth. It's almost serrated. We each picked up a tooth and examined it. Dom's was right. They were longer, and the sides were sharp and serrated like a bread knife. I think I felt mine pulsate, almost as if it had a heartbeat. Throw in a bag, I sighed. Maybe we should call. Before I could finish my sentence, an old man called out and waved us down. We turned... So I was the dock master, his face contorted in anger. You boys need to go. This boat, too. No longer allowed to dock here, he was yelling, pointing at my boat like it was some sort of monster. Whoa, wait, wait a second, I said, taken aback. I've been docked here for two years. What's wrong? We didn't do anything that broke any rules. Your friend last night, the drunk one, came in, tried to take it out while it was still tied to the dock, fucking lunatic. When me and the deckhand came out, he just jumped in the water. Dented up the boat and the dock. He was practically spitting. He was so mad. What's wrong with him? Is that your their idea fun? W listen, okay, we're very sorry, but we didn't let him do anything. I took a breath. This is going to sound insane. When we were out boating yesterday, we hit a staircase, you know, out, out in the middle of the ocean. I could tell the dock master wasn't having it, but I continued anyway. Something happened to him. So he, he, he's not himself. Did you call the cops? The dock master spat. No, no cops on my dock. Get your things. I'm giving you two days to be out of here. Two days. I don't care about your stairs. Get out. With that, he turned and went back to the main building, lighting a cigarette as he walked. It made me really sad. The dock master was usually a calm and kind man. It, it hurt to have him angry like this. He dove into the water, Ben said. No way he could have swam in the ocean in the state he was in. Yeah. Dom said simply. He was fucked up. So is the boat. Why would he try to take it? He's never driven a boat before, I said, inspecting the damage. It was dense and a few scratches, but what caught my eye was black mold growing from the side of the boat all the way underneath. It was thick, viscous. It wasn't there yesterday, at least. At least I didn't think. Hold on, I gotta check something. Ben, can you grab me my goggles from the car? Ben nodded and ran while... Dom squatted next to me, eyeing the mold. What's all that shit? I'm not sure, I said quietly. Remember when we were leaving the staircase, we we bumped into the shit on the way out. The stairs? No, the, the second bump. Maybe we did hit something. Maybe something hit us. Dom's eyes widened as Ben came back with the goggles. I took them and put them on, stripping down to my boxers. Whatever you do, don't open your mouth. Tom says, that shit doesn't look healthy. Yeah. I dove into the water next to the boat and looked up at it from below. There was a small black and purple looking cocoon sticking to the underside of my boat. Pulsating, quivering, like it was about to burst. It was about the size of a basketball. I quickly swam to the surface, pulling myself out of the water as fast as I could. <coughs> Fuck, fuck, <coughs> I said, gasping for air. Fuck. What? What? They both exclaimed. There's something attached to the boat. It looks like a giant purple fucking larva or a, a cocoon or some shit. It's moving. Fuck. No way, Ben said incredulously. Did it come from the stairs? I mean, I sure as fuck didn't bring it home, I said, lying on my back, staring at the sky. After a few moments of silence, Dom said, We need to go back. Dave's at the stairs. I don't know how, but he just is. You know? 
Ben and I looked at each other nervously. I think you're right, I replied. Ben nodded silently. We're at home right now gathering supplies. I have my pistol permit, so, so I'm going to bring that along as well. A headlamp, a shit ton of rope, three first aid kits, as well as some scuba gear. The dockmaster gave me two days. So of course, of course we have to take one final trip. After we found the cocoon, we went back to my place to prepare. I have a Ruger GP100 in a case locked in my closet. I pulled it out, shoved it in a holster. We also had about three first aid kits, crowbar, hunting knife, ropes, some miscellaneous snacks, and a few bottles of water. We hadn't talked much. Everyone lost in their own world, coping with whatever was coming next in the best way they could. Sleep was almost a complete impossibility. Same with eating. We just wanted this to be over. Or... Or for us to be dead. Whichever came first. There was a warning letter taped to the seat of my boat. One more day until forced eviction, it read in bold letters. The three of us looked at each other and weakly smiled. I don't think we're going to have to worry about that, Ben said quietly. Doms and I didn't answer. We knew he was probably right. No matter what happened, I don't think I'll ever go on a boat again. <laughs> if we're going to do this, we need to go now. Dom tapped me on the shoulder. I shook myself back, realizing I was just staring out into the open ocean. Now that we were close, I could feel the pull, the warmth. That was the stairs. All around me. And then my eyes opened, and suddenly... Suddenly, I was surrounded by darkness. It took me a few minutes to realize I wasn't on the boat anymore. I was alone. I was standing on something wet. The air around me thick with a smell of rotten flesh, and I immediately... I vomited by my feet and watched as it slowly dripped down the stairs... into the darkness. My eyes widened as my brain tried to catch up to what I was seeing. I wasn't on the boat. I was on the stairs. I shook my head violently and looked around, my eyes adjusting to the dark. Somehow the stairs were going deeper, no matter where I looked. Behind me, in front of me, all around were those stairs. All descending into this fetid stone maw. There were no sounds except the dripping of water and my own ragged breath. Doms? Ben! I called out, to no answer. My voice fell dead in the air like I was speaking at a brick wall. No echo, just that all-encompassing silence. The only thing to do is to go further. I felt a hand on my shoulder. Familiar and cold. I turned around and broke down, tears falling down my face as Dave stared back at me. Both of his eyes were ripped from their sockets. His face was split down the middle, stitched back together with black fishing wire. The same was true for his arms and legs. His clothes were tattered and torn, soaked with foul-smelling liquids. I, I couldn't begin to place. What happened? I sobbed. What's going on? Where is everyone? We went down the stairs. Dave said simply. We never made it out. No way. No way. No, no fucking way, I muttered. But when I looked down at myself, at my own body, I knew he was right. My skin, my skin was purple and wrinkled like I had been soaked in water for a whole week. All of my fingernails had fallen off, the tips of my fingers were green and, and yellow, dripping some sort of some sort of putrid pus. My clothes looked like his, dirty, covered in foul unknowns, and as I slowly removed my shirt with much effort, I saw black wire embedded in my flesh, keeping my chest from splitting apart. There is hope for you, at least, 
Dave said, his voice calm and level. But you need to go deeper. Fuck that. I fell to my knees. Fuck that. Just kill me. I can't. Nothing dies here. How long has it been like this? Dave paused for a moment before answering. I don't know. Maybe a week. Time is different here, too. How the fuck are you so calm? His face softened, and he extended his hand and pulled me up. Because I'm already gone. With that, he disappeared, leaving me in utter silence so I did the only thing I could do. I kept going deeper. With every step, the smell became more and more unbearable in the air. The air was getting hotter and hotter like I was walking into something's open mouth. The symbols on the wall became more chaotic as I went, and I found myself touching them without thinking, dragging pus along the walls like a grotesque slug. After what seemed like a lifetime, I arrived with a massive field with seaweed and other plants swaying like they were underwater. The ground was purple and brown and had the consistency of mud, tiny creatures poking their heads out and burrowing themselves intermittently as I trudged forward. They were large stone structures as well, of creatures I'd never seen I couldn't imagine. I walked, desperately searching for some sort of sign, something to keep me going among the madness, but I could find nothing. Eventually, I sat under the shade of one of the statues, resting my weary head against the stone. As I sat, I heard a voice coming from behind the statue. You made it. I spun around in disbelief. It was Dom's. Half his face carved down to the bone, the other half barely hanging by a thread of tendon, sagging like rotten fruit. His body was marred by the same black wire that was inside me, and his left arm was missing completely. Tears began to fall down my face. I made it, I said between sobs. Have you seen Ben? Or Dave? No, Dom said, closing his eyes. No one except you. Don't fall asleep. I saw Dave. He, he, he said there's hope if we go deeper. Did he? Dom smiled sadly, his teeth blackened and rotted. Have you found any? We stared at each other for a few moments before he closed his eyes. No matter how much I shook him, he, he wouldn't wake up. I sat next to the body and I wept, waiting for my turn to die or whatever it was that happened to us in this place. However, it never came. After a few minutes, the statue that we were, we were under began to vibrate and then shake violently like something within it was trying desperately to escape. And then a deafening sound, unlike, unlike anything I'd ever heard in my life, tore through my entire body. You made it. The voice next to me said above the noise. Here is the hope you seek. I didn't turn to look at where the voice came from or who said it. It was unimportant now. I, I, In the distance, a blood-red sun began to rise, and with it, a massive creature the size of a building raised its head to look at us. I, I, can't, I can't remember anything about its features or what it looked like, but I do. I do remember tears of blood falling down my face as it raised its massive appendages towards the sky. You'll go back, the voice said. It won't matter either way, so we'll allow it. My world. My world spiraled in a kaleidoscope of color and suddenly... Suddenly I was staring at a bright light. The sounds of a hospital clamored around me. I was told I was the only one they found alive, face down on my boat about 20 miles away from the dock we came from. They found Dom's next to me, dead, and Dave and Ben's bodies were never found. My right leg was infected with some open wounds, so, so it had to be amputated. 
He said that Doms died from the cold. But they wouldn't let me see his body. And that's it, I guess. That's what happened. Ever since I was released from that hospital, I haven't been able to think about anything else. I mean, every morning I wake up and I see the remnants of myself and I, I try to tell myself that it... It wasn't real. That we crashed. Hallucinating from lack of food and water, but I... It never works. I still see the stairs in my dreams. Ben and Dave's voices, faintly audible in the darkness. All I have to do is descend. Hey there, kids, it's me. Mr. Creepypasta, I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to tonight's story or watching tonight's video. I appreciate it. As always, I cannot thank you enough for always being here. And if you guys would like to see more or hear more, then I'd appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. Or if you're listening on the podcast, then click the follow button. You guys like words, right? I speak words. You guys hear words. Also, did you know you can read words? They put a lot of words into things called books, and I have two of those on Amazon. Mr. Creepypasta's Creepypasta Collection, Volumes 1 and Volume 2 are available now on Amazon. If you give them a search, or you can just scroll down to the description. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to all you guys who support on Patreon, patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, especially Jacob Schaefer, Jay, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Landa Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Dan Krause, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Miss Exandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Frickin', Azarine Fox, Robert White, Andreas Garza, Snails Brennan, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Lovin, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, Justin Johnson, 1-800 Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Jason Wilson, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Plater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Arse, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiwi the Sloth, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Talon Karlick, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and if you guys would like to join them on the list of people's names I mispronounce, you can always do so at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, as well as all those fine people in the description down below who help support this channel and keep the lights on and give treats to Hylas and Hercules. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs, and I love and appreciate every single one of you who support there or just support anywhere by watching and subbing. So good night, everybody and sweet dreams. <laughs>